All right, hey everybody, how you doing? It's Todd Ledbetter from All Music here on YouTube. Today we have 1976, my favorite top six albums from 1976. Uh, let's see, boy, I was uh, I was in the seventh grade, just getting started in junior high school. Pretty good year for uh, music, and um, I love a lot of these albums. The thing is, is that most of these albums that are in my list, I didn't listen to when I was in the seventh grade. There was one album that I did have, and it was one of my first really heavy rock and roll albums, and we'll get to that. But um, most all these other uh, albums I discovered either in high school or shortly after high school, and they have become my favorite albums that were, le were released in 1976. All right, so let's get started with uh, what we've got um, for our number six, my top picks for 1976. And let's, uh, let's, oh, let's see, that's not what I wanted to do. I always do that. All right, we're going to share the screen and we are going to go to my number six pick right here, High Voltage by ACDC. Great rock and roll album, one of their early rock and roll albums with Bon Scott on, uh, one of their early records with Bon Scott on vocals. Um, the classic, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll with that amazing um, bagpipe solo in it, going basically the whole time. Rock and roll singer, The Jack, that's a cool song, Live Wire, TNT, Dynamite. Uh, uh, can I sit next to you, girl, little lover? She's got balls and high voltage. Just a great album. Just really love ACDC sound. Um, and just their, f just rock and roll, you know, this is pure rock and roll. That's what I really like about them. Uh, so that's my number six pick, ACDC's high voltage. Um, it's kind of an interesting list for me today. Um, some of my all-time favorite bands are actually on this list, obviously, but just in, just coincidentally, they released albums in this year, um, and uh, you know, there's a lot of albums I like. I'm just going year by year, so it's like, why don't you like mu modern music, Todd? What you know? How come you're doing all old music? Well, I'm going by the year. You know, just realize that these are albums that were released you know, in this particular episode in 1976. So these are my favorite albums from that year. But as I have said, I, some of these bands are my favorite bands of all time. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to number five. And uh, we're going to go with the classic 2112 by Rush. Um, this album was introduced to me when I was a freshman in high school and uh, has the, um, uh, as was Rush, and I just, uh, over the years, became a Rush fan more and more and more as they release more albums. This is a fantastic album. I've actually recently, over the last year, re-listened to this album many times and just kind of rediscovered it again. Um, we, I used to play when I was a kid in high school, one of my very first bands, uh, we used to do Temples of Syrinx in a band that was called Armageddon. <laughs> so that was great. So the, uh, the 2112 Overture is great. Passage to Bangkok, Twilight Zone, Lessons, Tears and Something for Nothing. Super great album. Uh, it's a funny story about this album where I guess Rush was having trouble with the record company and they're like man you're not really selling the way you know you need to write some pop songs and so in uh in typical rush fashion they rebelled and this is what they came up with and it was such a hit that the record company basically just left them alone for the rest of their career and let them do whatever they wanted uh to because it was so successful for them uh so that is my number five pick um Rush's 2112. Great album. If you haven't heard it for a while, go back and check it out and wear some headphones. That's all I can say. Very, very cool album. Let's see. So we get down to the uh, fourth pick for me today for 1976. And we're going to go with 
Where is it? There it is. Another, none other than Steely Dan, another Steely Dan album. You know, some of these bands were just prolific and they were they were releasing bands every, or records every year or every other year. So that's why they keep ending up on my list. But this one also ends up on my list because it's a great album. Uh, the Royal Scam, 1976, nine songs, 41 minutes long. Kid Charlemagne, great song. Don't Take Me Alive, such a good song. Uh, the Fez, I love that song. Green Earring, it's a great song. Haitian Divorce is a good song. All these songs, Everything You Did, Royal Scam, these are all really great songs. And I just love the sound of Steely Dan um, and the way, that, the way that they were making records back in the 70s. Obviously, you know I like it. If you've been watching my shows, Steely Dan is pretty good. I mean, they're not one of my all-time favorite bands. Uh, I don't know if they would land in my top 10 all-time favorite bands. I mean, I just want to make that clear. But for 1976 and all of the albums that I have to choose from that, you know, I'm familiar with and that I listen to, this is number four for 1976. I think it's awesome. It's an amazing album. It sounds great. And, uh, classic songs on there that everybody knows about everybody's heard a lot of those songs on that album super good so here is uh like i alluded to earlier in the uh, uh this episode is this is the one album that i had when it came out uh, i went to kmart and i bought this album with my own money and uh it is aerosmith rocks this was pretty much the hardest rock and roll album I had at the time, 1976. Um, and I had this in 1976. And I played this on my uh, my little basically kid record player until I went back to Kmart later with more money, uh, my own money, because I had a paper route back then. So I would earn my own money and then I bought a, a stereo system that I could, you know, get some decent quality sound out of. It was, you know, a cheap, a cheap one but it was cool it was definitely good enough for a kid um, and I uh, wish I had that thing today actually <laughs> but uh, rocks by Aerosmith this is another just absolutely classic album from top to bottom you know back in the saddle again last child rats in the cellar combination sick as a dog nobody's fault uh, Get the lead out, licking a promise, and home tonight. Just such a good album. Uh, and I had this album first, and then um, and then my 1975 show uh, show I had uh, Toys in the Attic, which I actually got later after I kind of discovered Aerosmith and and I liked him. And a friend of mine had the Toys in the Attics, and then I ended up getting that on. I think it was eight track tape. Uh, pretty funny. Uh, but super cool album. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I could listen to it again and again. Um, now, here's where it gets a little bit, uh, you know, I mean, I got my one and two now for 1976 and it's basically a tie. I mean, I can't really say that I like one more than the other. I mean, maybe the way I have them listed, I'll just stick with it. But um, it's the same band actually um and uh one of my favorite bands if not my favorite band of all times it definitely in my top three um as we go to uh here you go it's a genesis album once again trick of the tell now this album um i don't know if you're laughing or not but uh yeah i like genesis um, Trick of the Tail. So this is the first Genesis album without Peter Gabriel on vocals. So this is, I mean, uh, yeah, without Peter Gabriel. So Phil Collins takes over on vocals after, I guess, a search for a vocalist that they couldn't find. And he decides, let me give it a go. Let me try it. And it worked out. And he became the vocalist for the rest of their career, basically. Um, but a, an amazing, amazing album. I love this album. Uh, it's got some incredible incredible songs and some some basic Genesis standards uh, dance on the volcano entangled squonk is a killer song uh, madman moon is just great all these songs are great songs robbery assault and battery ripples is a beautiful song beautiful song 
and uh, Trick of the Tell and Los Endos. I mean, these are all just some incredibly amazing songs with Peter Gabriel singing, and you got Steve Hackett on guitar, and Tony Banks on keyboards, and uh, Mike Rutherford on uh, bass guitar and other guitars. It's really, really, really good. Um, I've listened to this album over and over and over for years and years and years. I still listen to it. I go on like binges where I just listen to Genesis uh, for weeks and months on end, uh, just always discovering and hearing the music and learning new things about it. It's just really good. So, well, I kind of, you know, spoiled number one because you already know it's going to be a, a Genesis song, uh, album, my number one. Oh, oh by the way, tri uh, let's see, Trick of the Tell was released in February of uh, 1976. And then Wind and the Wutherings was released in December. I don't know how they can come up with this kind of quality music in that kind of span of time but they certainly were prolific uh, especially this year um, because these songs are amazing as well uh, every one of them from top to bottom uh, 11th Earl of Mar One for the Vine Your Own Special Way it's a great beautiful song sung by Phil Collins written by um, Mike Rutherford Walt Gorilla all in a moon uh, all in a mouse's night <laughs> blood on the rooftops these are amazing songs uh, uh, un, uh, unquiet slumber for the sleepers um, in the quiet earth and afterglow it from the album just it plays so well from song to song one song just building up and leading into the next mode and the next song and you're just so satisfied at the end of the song that you just enjoyed and you, you, you're you you're like oh it's over but you're so satisfied because the next song that comes up is just as good and it just leads into the next song uh, amazing amazing album amazing group um, love Genesis uh, couldn't say it enough but that's my uh, that's my list that's my quick list you know not a lot of detail about these um, I encourage you to check some of these out for yourself, but also let me know what you liked in 1976. You know, write it down in the uh, comments, you know, give me some uh, ideas of what you were listening to um, back then or what your favorite albums are that maybe like me, you discovered later on in life that were released back in 1976. I mean, there was a lot of other albums that were released um, in 76. Uh, that, and it, it, it wasn't that hard of a choice for me, um, frankly. Uh, to pick out my favorites, but there are a lot of um, other ones. You know, the Eagles Hotel California came out, uh, Station to Station by David Bowie, uh, Thin Lizzy's uh, Jail, uh, Jailbreak came out, Black and Blue by the Rolling Stones, uh, ELO, A New World, World, World Record, that fell off my list as I was going, it was there, uh, as well as Queen's Day at the Races, that fell off my top six as well. If I was doing a top 10, they'd probably be on there. Um, but also Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap by ACDC was released that same year. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, uh, Rainbow, Rising was there, uh, Kiss had released albums, Silk Degrees by Boz Skaggs. I mean, I had that album when I was a kid. That was a great album. Love that one. Uh, it just goes on and on. Um, The Pretender by Jackson Brown. Let's see what else we got. Kansas Left Overture. I listened to that thing all the time when I was uh, basically, I think, starting in about ninth grade. And then uh, Boston, their first album. Great, great. That would be in my top 10 for sure. Frampton Comes Alive I had. I bought that myself at the record store. I Fly Like an Eagle from Steve Miller. Uh, just so many. Amigos by Santana, Rod Stewart, A Night on the Town. Great album. Love that album. I actually had that album uh, in 1976. I used to listen to it all the time. Great songs on there. Um, uh, let's see. Alice Cooper Goes to Hell. Another great album I listened to. Uh, let's see. Uh, goes on and on. Oh, well, there's The Greatest Hits by the Eagles was also released. That was a huge album and it has just an amazing songs and that thing's one of the top, biggest selling albums you know of all time it's up there pretty high uh, probably in the top 10 of all time selling albums I do believe 
Taken to the Streets by the Doobie Brothers, Styx, Crystal Ball. Oh, man, just goes on and on and on. There's more Black Sabbath, Jethro Tull, Eric Clapton, uh, Sweet, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Oh, man, even Rory Gallagher. Just um, all kinds of just amazing songs uh, and albums released that year. So it's hard to make a list, you know, it's hard, really hard. Um, but let me know what yours is and put it down in the uh, description. And don't forget to uh, like this video, click the like and um, subscribe, please. I, I need to build this channel up and subscribers is the way you do it. And the algorithm and click the notification bell and all that, you know, whether you know about YouTube or not, it's it, you definitely got to play the YouTube game in order to be successful here. So help me out a little bit there. I sure appreciate it. And I'm trying to provide content every day for you. Uh, also go down in the description and check out some other ways you can help the channel if you are interested. I really appreciate you watching my uh, my channel and uh, and I've got some um, oh I've got uh, I've got a friend coming on um, on Saturday. Uh, Jeff Castanon. He was uh, I interviewed him earlier and, he, and we are going to uh, review an album. Uh, coming up and it's going to be a Steely Dan album Asia which I think was released next year and I'll probably be on my list for uh, 1977 I think it was 77 uh, but we're going to we're going to review that album together um, so that's coming up and then I also have another uh, Led Zeppelin review coming up with Tracy Longo so that's going to be cool so we're going to start doing some album just single album reviews as well uh, with some special guests. So stay tuned for that. Don't so, And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so when those get posted, you're going to be notified. All right, thank you for watching and we will catch you uh, next time and that will probably be 1977. We'll see you there.